Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today we're working on a pocket that's made with leaves <laughs> for the Specimen Nature Journal. So the first thing I want to show you is the sneaky peek. And right here is where we left off. So we have a indigo bunting right here, if you can see. Isn't he pretty? It's a pretty blue. And I just took a bunch of greenery that was in that... Uh, birds and blooms book magazine and i kind of blended it on here to make it look like he was out in the weeds i did a stamp here and then i don't know what kind of bird that is it looks like he could be an oriole but i'm not exactly sure all right and then that's the the middle uh, well this is the first signature that's the second and the way i made these pages these were really thin papers, and I just kind of, I think I folded them in half, or I folded them into each other somehow, but you have a pocket in here, <clears throat> and that's why I punched it all the way through, so you can actually put something inside. Oh, I must have just glued the two sides together, but it made two pages, because the other one is up here on the front, as you see, so... It was kind of a really cool little concept that I came up with. And, of course, I've done that over here on this other side as well. And I'll go ahead and show you this page. There's not much on it, just a snowy owl. Isn't he pretty? It's got those white and gray feathers. Or maybe that's a brown. Okay, we're going to stop there. <laughs> Put that back together. <clears throat> now, today... We're going to be working with this copper foil. I have a saying here about there, is, there are times when solitude is better than society and silence is wiser than speech. And we're going to use that. I've got a little uh, bunch of leaves here. They were kind of made out of just scraps that I had. Like that was a scrap from the Stamperia pad. There was one edge that I was able to use. And... Uh, those leaves are this. They're a, the Thinlet Dyes uh, 665559, and they're leaf fragments. That's why they have these holes in them. They make the neatest looking kind of, and you can grunge them up. You can like spray paper to, to cut them out of. I just was using up some of my scraps. And then... We're going to be using some more of these little guys, I believe. The uh, snippets, the curator. Yeah, I think these are the curator ones. So we're just going to pick pieces and parts out of here that I think may help delineate between the leaves. And we're also going to probably put some of this iced espresso. It's hard to see the name. Iced espresso uh, metallic luster deco art. And uh, it's like a really pretty brownish color, but I wanted something on the edges of these. I could ink them, but then I thought, no, let me just see if I can use that. And I have a couple of faux postage stamps that I made, and I've got butterflies on them. So I don't know if I'm going to be using those or one of those. Um, yeah, I've got a video on these. I made them a while back. I think I have a video. <laughs> And the page that these are going on is this one right here. Now, I've been working through the book, and I've been putting things in it. <laughs> Just uh, sitting there listening to, you know, my phone on YouTube or something and um, just kind of crafting away. This is one of those uh, pockets that I needed to pull out. I was telling you I had something with bugs or something on it. So, the butterfly. So, I pulled that one out and... um glued it down i did have a video on this everybody seemed to enjoy that and then there's a few things in the pocket that has to do with bugs and over here this is that braille paper that i sprayed up and it's beside the uh, <clears throat> the paper from uh, the white pages of the phone book yeah <laughs> those things you don't see anymore uh, i i think i might put something through this strip and then again i don't know um, before I used the, just a thin strip of paper. All right, I got this piece of paper here. It wasn't quite thin enough, and I'm just making sure it's long enough, and I'm going to trim it off right there, 
and we're going to see I'm going to kind of angle cut the edges just for the heck of it because we're going to thread it right in like this in and out in and out and that's what I did to the other one now this is two-sided of course it's from the Stamperia pad and I just thought it kind of gave it a, a finished look instead of putting a ribbon through here because I didn't think a ribbon was really in tune <clears throat> with the concept of the book <laughs> so I thought maybe this would work okay so I'll just add a little dab of glue when I get the glue bottle open and I'll stick that in the trash can don't need it anymore I'm always trying to use those scraps up all right so I think what I'm going to do with this because on the back side I've got a piece of uh, vellum that was from the Tim Holtz vellum book and I just kind of glued it on here just to have something and I also have this as the other side of the braille paper and I ripped it and I put a die cut flower on here and I think I'm going to actually glue this down up here so it's a tuck an up tuck so I'm going to do that there and I really am trying to figure out where exactly I want this to be I think I could pull it down to be about right there so that's going to help me on this end to try to figure this out because I would like this to be a pocket up here so we're going to go ahead and cut a thumb punch out of it Ooh, that was a good one and then I think we could do a little inking I'm going to use my vintage photo ink here just so the browns and stuff stay, stay together did I thank you for being here I, <laughs> sometimes I remember and sometimes I don't I just mom's had me running all over the place this morning so I've not got my head on my shoulders now this part I don't know if we're going to see it but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway and just kind of pokey poke some color on there yeah so there we go that part is done and now with this part this is what I'm gluing the leaves to I know it's kind of shiny so try to uh, excuse me for the moment <laughs> but I want to kind of set it like about right here and I'm going to rip it now I might rip it way up here and then come down but I might have to keep laying it down here to figure out exactly where I want it to be ripped actually it's getting close to <laughs> where I need it to be uh let's see so there is that and you can stay you still got the opening here which is good I need to come over here and do a little rifty rip to shrink this up a bit let's just do it that way and I was hoping with all the holes that's inside of the the leaves as you can see the the foil will shine through <clears throat> so I think that's good right there okay so now what do we need to do I'm probably gonna go ahead and glue that down and I'm okay with that bottom being straight because it may be that you know I overlap it a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this I think all the way down I wanted some of the braille to show but oh well I don't think it's gonna happen <laughs> this part I am going to glue because I know that's supposed to be part of that pocket and then yep it's all the way out to the outside I'm just gonna glue it like right around in here all right let me see if I can get that to lay down correctly yeah 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 I think my little glue rag is about on its last legs here all right <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and flip this up and put a little dot of glue right there and right up here and that's going to hold that on for me I don't need a, any glue anywhere else but there okay pushing it in to make it adhere then we're going to put this over here and put this over that part of it 
All right, how interesting. <laughs> uh, that was a piece of the braille paper that was like an extra because I had uh, ripped a larger piece off and it's somewhere else in here, I believe. So I, uh, I'm okay with the little bit of it that's showing because you do get to see it on the back page. All right, now what we're going to need to do, set this back a little bit and we're going to get in here with our uh, ground espresso. <laughs> Iced, <laughs> iced espresso. Wow, I got ground espresso ink and iced espresso this. So let's see what we got here and how it's going to work. Oh, that's kind of a pretty color. It does a little bit of um, grunging up this nice clean looking <laughs> piece of paper. So that's all we're going to do. It's just kind of scuff it around. Ooh. I don't know if y'all have had any snow, but, well, we don't have it. It's just, it's been blowing. Like yesterday, there was this massive storm front that came through, but it only lasted about a half an hour, and it just barely covered the ground. My husband, he went up to hunt a little bit in the woods, and he was hiking his way out of there because it was coming down to beat the band. I mean, those flakes were huge. They were like ping pong ball size. And so by the time he hikes out, or most of the way, it had quit. <laughs> I said, well, it, it was cold. It was really cold. It's been in the 30s. We had some great weather before, and now all of a sudden, I don't know where it's coming from. Now, this is sort of a darker color, which was kind of what I wanted to try out. Uh, but you can get lighter colors of this. There's like antique gold and uh, rose gold and uh, like a almost a, like a silver there's uh, quite a bit of them so you have different ones to choose from now there's all kinds of different kind of treatments that people like to use you could actually ink these if you didn't have any of this uh, what is this stuff called uh, it's just a luster I guess all right, let me at least get this one. These solid ones are the ones that aren't exciting. So that's the ones I need to do. Okay, all done. <laughs> I didn't think you wanted to watch the rest of those. Um, so I'm taking these kind of solid ones. And I'm going to try to build some. And I don't want anything to kind of poke out. That's the only problem. At least uh, into, I can always cut that off though. Let's just do that. We don't need the stem over here. Let's see what, that's what I was meaning. I didn't want it to stick into the, the spine part there. So let's go ahead, pull our glue open. And I'm thinking this will work good. Um, it may be that I need to do fabric tack. I don't know. And I'm only putting a little bit on the inside. Uh, because I'm not sure where I want to tuck some of the curator pieces. So we're just going to kind of put that right here. Bring out my rag and tap it down. Because some of these places, it's they're going to kind of all blend together here eventually, you know. So I think I'm going to need to have a little bit of variation is what it is I'm going for. Uh, just trying to think of what story I could tell you today. <laughs> I'm always trying to think of some story to tell you. We, um, now my, my Aunt Lucy, <clears throat> when she was still alive, she used to tell me about my great uh, granddad, Cotton Hill Bill Markham. And he was named that because he lived up on Cotton Hill. <laughs> and uh, he had a mule that he rode everywhere and oh there there was something interesting okay now I don't know if you know it this is something I could talk about that you haven't heard before I don't believe now there's so many different branches of Markham's over there but they're all from the same guy that's the thing he's my fourth great-grandfather Josiah Markham now he 
was from Chesterfield County, Virginia. I think that's where he said he was born in his uh, Civil, or not Civil War, uh, Revolutionary War um, papers. So they interview him or something, and they'll tell you where they were born, where they were raised, and all this kind of stuff. Well, that's where most of his information came from. Now, he never said who his parents were, which, you know, oh, the bane of my existence. Because all these people are saying this person, uh, this man, this woman are his mom and dad. And I just don't know it for a fact. I, you know, I've never found it anywhere. So I've never taken it, but with a grain of salt. If I couldn't find it written down or something, I just, I didn't know whether it would be true. But that's beside the fact. Well, <laughs> we were talking about his, um. Uh, his uh, Civil War and uh, Revolutionary War period. Um, so, anyhow, he uh, he fought, and then he he got married down in Lower Virginia, like Washington County, and then I think he must have went through the Cumberland Gap. If anybody's heard of that, um, he went through there, and he came over to Kentucky, and then eventually made it up to. Wayne County, West Virginia, which is where he settled. By that time, he had brought in, how many, they have 10 kids, um, eight boys and two girls. I think that might be right. Yeah, there was a lot of boys, and some of them were already married uh, when they came in, it was said. There's a few histories and things I've pieced together that I've found that talk a little bit about his life. And, uh, so, yeah, they're talking about, you know, when, when he came in and then his children, and there's so many people that's descended from them all. I mean, I'm kind of, m most of the, like a quarter, at least a quarter, maybe half of each one of those counties that's nearby over there where he settled because, you know. He, he went in, into uh, eastern Kentucky. Uh, some of his kids settled in there. Others settled in uh, uh, upper or lower Ohio, in um, right across the Ohio River area. Uh, they were everywhere. So there are so many people that could be related. So the story... <laughs> I get it. I'm squirreling, aren't I? Okay, so the story is that there's so many lines of Markhams that at one point they started giving them these uh, names. These family line names is basically what they were. Now, mine, I'm a bullethead Markham. And <laughs> uh, it was said that the name came from a William Markham, and I thought it was my uh, great grandpa, great great grandpa, Cotton Hill Bill, but no, it actually came from his uncle, and I guess that's who he was actually named after. I'm going to turn this around so my stem can go in the other direction. So, actually, I'm going to lay it over top like that. Yeah, so he was named after his great uncle. Or his uncle. I can't remember how it worked. Because uh, my great-grandpa, his dad was Josiah. Now, Josiah's brother was William Wilkham. And that's who, you know, Cotton Hill Bill is named for. And he was said to be a, a Bullethead Markham. So that's how we got our name. Now, he got the name Bullethead because he was in one of the battles in the Civil War. And uh, he was shot, and they said he was shot in his in his neck, and so it was a very um, um, local area that he was fighting in, and he actually uh, was just left on the battlefield to die. He fell out, he got shot off his horse and everything. So he is left there, and what happened was his sisters stole out in the dark of night and rescued him and took him to a barn 
and he could not swallow because his throat muscles were shredded almost. So they nursed him back to life, uh, basically. They would take and uh, they took a straw, like a hollow straw. It's not hay, it's the, the bigger type of stuff, but they took that and they kind of, uh, they took broth and, you know, sucked it up into these straws and then they dribbled it down his throat and kept him alive that way. So he eventually recovered and, um, yeah, he, he came out of it and raised a family and all this stuff. And it was said that he was, his head was, his, his head was so stubborn or, or hard that a bullet couldn't kill him. Or, and so that's where the bullet head come from. And there's, there's many other kind of sayings and things like that. They're kind of interesting. Um. Now, there's another set of Markhams that are called Quillback Markhams. That's because they had so many children, it rivaled the quills on the back of a porcupine. And uh, what were some of the other ones? Oh, now, my grandma, she was a salmon, like the fish. But her sisters, all of them, all three of them married a Markham. And all of them were said not to be related to each other at all. And so... <laughs> Um, the one youngest, uh, sister, she married a pinhook Markham. And <laughs> I kept searching and searching, trying to figure out where that come from. It was, oh, it took me forever. But he was real shady. He would go to, they said he would go to a, uh, an auction or a, um, what do you call that? Where they take all the cattle to sell. And, um. He would go, but he wouldn't go inside. He would actually stand outside and buy a cow from somebody and then turn around and sell it to the, another person coming in uh, without actually going into the stockyard. That's it. Without actually going into the stockyard. Well, that is called pin hooking because you're not giving any money to the stockyard uh, people. You're, you're getting all the profits yourself, and you're not even going in and, and you know, sharing profit kind of thing. So, yes, that is called pin hooking. And, oh, here's me an in. I wonder if that, that would be kind of cool. It's got a big thing down there. Let's see what I can do with this. Yeah, so that, that one was pin hooking. And I thought, oh, gosh, what else? What else? <laughs> so, I have my oldest grandma's sister married a uh, picture taken d markham now you also have names that go with the person themselves and then they've got names that go with um you know their line of work or, or just them in general kind of thing i think i'll put that one down here um so yeah he was picture taken d markham of course he was the actual local photographer that's why he had that name but his line of markhams though we're called the big nose markups. <laughs> and I've also heard that they were called gourd nose, like a gourd out in the garden. So I don't know which one is actually the right word, but I think it can go back and forth. I'm trying to find another shape. I went, I do have, oh, where did it go? There. Well, there's one with words. Okay, let's see what we can do here. <clears throat> but yes, there's there's different uh, different names sometimes for them. But there's uh, yeah, what else was there? Lick skillet. I've heard of a lick skillet, Markham. Now there's actually a place on Jenny's Creek. You know that's the the creek that we're working on now with the cemetery books. But there's actually a creek or, or a a place on Jenny's Creek that uh, it's called Lick Skillet. And I think it's because somebody got in a fight. They said it was two women. And one woman was cheating around with the other woman's husband or something. So this lady goes in and whacks the other one upside the head with a skillet. <laughs> We've been trying to get the gist of that uh, story for a while. And so far, I don't know that we've actually <laughs> gotten it yet. I don't know. 
All right, I'm just going to glue this bottom side because I think I'm going to try to tuck it right there so, so you can sort of see it. I don't think it hurt if any of the glue seeped because I don't know that uh, anything's really going to get tucked in up there. <laughs> so all in all, isn't that an interesting place? You've got all these different things going on over there. Now there's tons and tons of jakes over there. And I don't know if I want that light one there or this dark one. Now, yeah, and, and all Markham's now. And there's a Jewelry Jake, and there's a Baltimore Jake, and <laughs> Jingo Jake. He's one of the oldest ones. He's actually uh, the firstborn of Josiah. So he's way back. <laughs> but he... He liked to dance, and uh, people would play a banjo, and he would do this little shuffle kind of thing, you know, up uh, up in the uh, bedroom or something, they said. <laughs> so that was where he got that name. Now here's kind of a, a really light one. I wanted another light one. Here's sort of a green one. I'm finding them all over the place in here. These are sort of little words and things that has to do with um, uh, the specimens and such. So it's it's kind of interesting to have these in here because they're adding some of those little words. And I don't know if I need the blue. The blue doesn't really... I'm trying to pick out anything that might be over in here. Um, I don't know what else I got here or what else I can put in. I'm still looking for anything that's kind of like a different little shape. There's an L. I don't want to go to the point of covering up everything. Let's just stick this one in here and see what happens. Whoops. But since these here were just a little on the blah side, I didn't think it would hurt to cover these greenish ones up down under here. All right, so that may be, let me, let me take my eye and throw it back. Now, I wouldn't mind maybe having something right here on this corner. Need, needs to be smaller than that. <laughs> oh, here's a different size. Yeah. Do I have a spot somewhere for that? Maybe, maybe right down here. That would be good. And then I still got to get one for the other corner. All right. That has objective on it. <laughs> All right. What else do I have? Oh, I've got this circle. No, I'm going to have a square. Hmm. I probably need to get myself some more of these little guys because I, I like to use them a lot. A lot. Maybe that one. That one's got prize metal on it. I just don't want them. Um... That one's got lichen on it. Hmm. All right, I found this one. It's Botanical Lab. You're not going to see that part. Manchester University. So we're going to slip that one up in here. He's going to go about right there. I guess it's like a slide looking thing. Okay. So that's, I think, all we need there. Let's see what we got to finish up with. I did want to put this saying on here. Somewhere. Okay, maybe, maybe right there. I also had these because it's it's butterfly themed, and I kind of wondered if that wouldn't do good up here. And I'm trying to balance it off because I've got this really light paper over here. And see how that's going to bounce and back and forth. Hmm. Maybe I could do that. 
How open is that? Oh, I've done glued it shut right there, so I've only got this part that can open, so why not just stick that up here? And then I'll put the butterflies where they're sitting. Yeah, just about like that. All right, not that one. This one. <laughs> Went the brown one because it matches the colors on the opposite side. Okay. Now. Right like that. Okay. Now I can either leave all these little pieces loose or go back in there with a little bit of glue in case I think they need to go down. Like that piece probably needs to go down. Maybe this piece. Right there. And maybe this little piece right there. All right. I think it's done. What do you think? How do you like it? Does that look a... I gotta find something to in the pocket. Now the leaves are a little green, so you really don't notice that uh, the individual ones is what I was saying. You don't really, they're so subtle, you don't see too many individual ones. Now here is the pocket. That's about as big as it is right there. So I could actually keep that and just leave it in here. It's a deep pocket too, so it really goes down in there. And then, here's what it looks like up close. <laughs> um, I always forget to show you an up close. So there you go. And it's a, it goes with the theme. I thought it would be pretty with the, the foil coming through. There we go. But I hope you like that. And you come back again and check with me the next time to see what else I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.